Hi, I'm Nick and today I'm going to show you uh, my first two uh, proper Arduino projects that I've completed. Now the, um, the first one is uh, this, I guess, rather unassuming box. Um, it's a set of quiz buttons uh, that I built a few years ago now, maybe two years ago, for use with the uh, family Christmas Day quiz. It consists of this box here, which has got an Arduino Uno inside with a prototype shield uh, on top, which all the um, resistors and uh, connectors are uh, soldered onto. It's got uh, three push buttons here. Uh, it's got four connectors, which route via these switches into the board and four sets of uh, LEDs. Along with the main box then come four of these push buttons. Uh, this is a big dome push button that I got from Protopic, about eight pounds each I think. Uh, and that's uh, very simply wired up uh, through this six and a half mil jack there. To four sets of coloured cables, which I'll just connect up. I think I got the coloured cables from Amazon. They were reasonably pricey, but you know, why not? Now obviously the idea is I give out uh, these coloured buttons to the four teams. There we go. And then finally, uh, some power. I've uh, mounted the Arduino board with the two power sockets uh, prow from the box. Um, obviously, either will work. So there's two modes of operation really for this. The first is just, um, just powered sort of independently. It just works as a simple sort of quiz button box. So uh, the first person to press, uh, the press is registered, they get a, a light on their button and the light here illuminates and then no one else um, can press. Uh, my black button here will reset and then we're good to go again for the next round. If someone answers incorrectly I can freeze them out, this, this switch here purely just disconnects the line from the push button and now they can answer the next question. Mm. Hmm. My blue one stopped working, strange. Hmm. I'll look at that later. So that's the basic operation of um, quiz buttons. But uh, to take it a bit further then, I wrote a little program in Visual Basic which just monitors the, uh, or just listens out on the serial monitor and responds accordingly. So first of all I've got the four teams here. I can um, give the team a new name, whatever, and this, uh, this window here kind of replicates what I've got in the box. So uh, if someone, someone pushes, <laughs> it registers the fact that they've pushed first and they're um, in bold. And obviously as you heard, um, it also uh, sounds, uh, uh, plays, a, plays an audio clip. There we go. And when I reset, I get, the, uh, get that feedback too. The audio clips are, can be defined here in the sort of standard way. And then uh, this is where the green and red button come in. So if I ask a question, someone answers and they got it right, there we go. Or if they got it wrong, there we go. And one final thing this can do uh, is f uh, when a uh, button, is, button is pressed, if I've got this ticked here, it will send a spacebar keyboard signal, 
which is a uh, standard uh, play pause signal for most media players. So for example, we can play name that tune and uh, where someone answers, uh, it will pause the, the, the track playing. Or I also wrote another little program that's a sort of guess that pixelation thing. When someone answers it, pauses the, uh, the picture. If they guess correct, then it reveals. And if they guess incorrect, then we just keep playing. Anyway, there we go. If I was to build this again, I would make one change. I used pull down resistors on the input pins. Uh, which register the button presses. Uh, this means that they're held low via a 10k resistor and they reg register a button press when they're brought high. Uh, this works perfectly well but it means that I have to send a 5 volt line down the cable to the button box and I've subsequently realised that if the cable insulation was to get damaged or um, if I plug the cable into the Arduino first and then was a bit incautious with the other end before I plugged it in the button box, there's, uh, there's a chance that I could short out the 5 volt line straight to ground and that could potentially damage the Arduino. So a, a better method would probably be, be to use pull up resistors which would then mean the cable just needed a ground feed and the worst that could happen here is uh, really just that the signal line would get shorted to ground and I mean that's what happens during a button press anyway so um, no damage is going to occur there. So that is the uh, that's the first bit of the project and then the second phase I guess is this now this hasn't actually been used yet uh, Christmas quiz got cancelled last year so I'm hoping it gets uh, its uh, debut this year. Again this is based on an Arduino Uno but uh, this time it was quite a bit more complicated and so I wasn't going to be able to fit everything on a prototype board. I uh, went through various uh, options such as using strip board uh, which I discounted because it it's too complicated for that really and I looked at getting custom made boards ordered over the internet and that was really too expensive for what I needed so I ended up uh, producing my own boards uh, with um, photo developing and uh, uh, etching with acid. The first time I've done that and I have to say apart from you know the, the first one I did went wrong but apart from that everything went okay I was, I was quite pleased. So I've got the Arduino Uno in here um, that then connects to a, um, I guess a primary logic board, which I've um, I've included a uh, transparent uh, window on the base of the project, so I could see my work. I guess uh, that's the that's the bulk of the logic, and then behind uh, this fold-down panel is uh, f uh, four boards for the individual uh, large displays at the front. I've also got um, four switches which uh, do a similar similar role um, to the switches on the quiz buttons in that they just uh, take the power away from an individual light. So let me just plug it in and we can demonstrate that. So if blue team aren't playing then that does indeed count that out. And they're back on. And then finally I've got a reset button here. Uh, so it's a pretty simple operation. I've got uh, a set of 8-bit uh, shift registers and uh, four switches and simply if I want to uh, increase someone's score I just click and their score is going up. And if I want to reset, hit this button here and we're done. This um, 
this uh, array of LEDs drew too much power uh, really for Arduino to cope with and in fact uh, these LEDs used 12 volts and I found that when I fed 12 volts through uh, the Arduino's voltage converter it was getting really hot, like too hot to touch. Uh, so this also includes just on the corner of the uh, board here a DC to DC converter which drops it down to 5 volts for the Arduino and then I can um, use a 12 volt adapter uh, to power into this to, to run these uh, large LEDs on the front. The case itself was built from some offcuts of plywood, uh, cut and shaped uh, using a jigsaw and a router mainly. Uh, the front piece was um, just again uh, an offcut of MDF with the uh, cutouts formed using uh, again a jigsaw and rounded over with a router and then finally I gave it a couple of coats of uh, gloss uh, black spray paint to finish it off. This is the main board. It uses a 4021 input shift register to read the two switch positions of each uh, four toggle switches and uh, there are a series of 74 HC595 output shift registers, uh, one for each LED digit and obviously they're all uh, daisy chained together, so um, only uses I think uh, four connections uh, from the Arduino. Uh, now these shift registers work by feeding a voltage to the LED segments like this. The front side LEDs use a different method though. The big displays need a higher voltage uh, because they actually consist of multiple LEDs in series uh, to light each segment. So I'm using a 12 volt line for this and that would just be too much for the 74 HC 595s to handle. So instead I'm using uh, 6B 595 shift registers and these work by sinking voltage to ground. Obviously that meant that the, uh, these big LEDs had to be uh, common anode types. Finally, there are four identical boards, one for each pair of front digits and their shift registers and these are each mounted behind the front panel inside the uh, inside the case. Well that's it, I hope you uh, like my projects, let me know if you've got any comments or questions and uh, yeah, see you next time.